There's Rogers, Griffith, and Guthrie, ranking members Pallone, Castor, and Eshoo, and distinguished members of the committee. It's an honor to be with you today. Today, our nation is in a much different position than we were at the start of the pandemic. Just three years ago, we were recording the first COVID-19 cases that sadly resulted in as many as 15 to 20,000 deaths per week. We were limited in treatments and vaccines were not yet available. Two years ago, we began the largest vaccination program in the history of this country. And along the way, we've learned how to adapt to and manage an evolving virus. Thanks to 670 million vaccines administered in the United States and the work of those at CDC and thousands of federal, state, local, and private sector partners, and because of the more than 100 million infections Americas have endured and survived, we have built a wall of immunity and expanded the tools available to decrease the risk of severe disease and death from COVID-19. This past week, hospital admissions and deaths are down both nearly 9% from the previous week. Though we have made remarkable progress, we also had nearly 3,500 deaths from COVID-19 in the last week. These are our family members, our neighbors and friends and colleagues. Their deaths are tragic and make it clear that we have more work ahead. Entering the fourth year of our activated response to COVID-19, we are moving faster than ever to deliver information to the public. Just three months after the bivalent vaccine was recommended, CDC scientists published data on vaccine effectiveness against symptomatic infection, and two weeks later, followed up with data on how well these vaccines work to prevent severe disease and hospitalization. Only one month after we identified the latest subvariant XBB 1.5 through our genomic surveillance, CDC published data to demonstrate that the bivalent vaccine was just as effective as it was against prior Omicron subvariants. These data continue to build on strong evidence that the best way to prevent severe disease and death from COVID-19 is to be up to date with your vaccines, including the bivalent vaccine. Our increased speed is the result of an intentional and proactive effort to address both the challenges and opportunities at CDC. This is the work of CDC moving forward, an initiative I launched after an extensive agency review with internal and external input. We are focused on six key areas of improvement, sharing scientific findings and data faster, enhancing laboratory scientific science and quality, translating science into easy to understand policy, prioritizing communications, developing a workforce prepared for future emergencies, and promoting results-based partnerships. Two weeks ago, I announced a reorganization to reduce bureaucracy, break down silos, promote public health capabilities, and increase accountability. This strengthens the foundation of the agency to tackle our focus areas. But we know that moving boxes around alone will not modernize CDC. We are equally focused on how we do our work, on our systems and processes internally. For example, we reduced internal scientific review times by 50% and are publishing our science and data faster. We were the first in the world to produce and share data showing real world performance of the Genios vaccine against MPOX. We're investing in accessibility and communications, fostering clearer public health communications by rebooting the front door to CDC, streamlining content to make it easier for American people to find what they need. And we've established a CDC Ready Responder Program to better prepare CDC's workforce to engage at a moment's notice to future health threats, no matter where they work at CDC, and to sustain that engagement throughout a response. We're committed to this work and more, but to maximize our potential and to fully protect the nation's health, we also need critically important help from you in Congress. Workforce authorities, such as strengthening student loan reimbursement authority, expanding danger pay to appropriately compensate our staff when put in harm's way, and providing flexibility to quickly move staff to respond to a threat would provide the opportunity to fully turn CDC into a response agency. We need data authorities so that we can access better quality, standardized, and timely data so individuals and families can make informed decisions about their health and policymakers can better target resources and respond to threats. CDC must be the most advanced and capable agency in the world when it comes to disease detection, tracking, and forecasting. Data authority coupled with investments in our data modernization initiative will make that possible. 
I am committed to working with you to find common ground to support public health and to make strides toward achieving health security for all Americans. Thank you, and I look forward to your questions.